welcome. In today's video I'm going to share with you all my recipe for flour pira and I'm doing this so that I can send it to the temple because I often make sweets and donate it to the temple and in this recipe these are the ingredients you're going to need. I have here one pound of four cups of flour. You're going to need some water to knead this. I have here one and a half cups I'm starting with. I may or may not use all of it. I also have one and a quarter cups of water with one cup of sugar that I'm going to use to create a syrup, some condensed milk that I'm going to add to that syrup, which is about one cup, some ginger, three tablespoons of freshly minced ginger, half of a cup of milk powder, half of a teaspoon of elaichi or ground cardamom, and one tablespoon of ghee. So the complete list of ingredients for this recipe will be found down below in the description box. So let's get started on putting this together. The first thing I want to do is put up my pot to heat up on medium. And to my pot, I'm going to add my sugar. Now you can make this as sweet as you like. If you want it more sweet, you can add more sugar. If you want it less sweet, you just add half the amount of sugar. And I'm going to add is that one cup of water to one cup of sugar. And I'm going to allow this to dissolve. And I always like making an extra syrup or extra pad because sometimes I run out of pad and I always think it's better to have a little extra than you make less and you don't have enough. So we're going to let this come up to a boil, let that sugar melt, and let this syrup thicken up before we add the rest of the ingredients to the syrup. So I'm not going to add anything to my flour. I'm going to mix this as is, and I'm going to knead it with enough water to create a firm dough. Once your dough has come together, continue kneading it until it's smooth. So I finished kneading my dough and I went ahead and I put up a pot with some oil so that I can fry my dough. One thing I wanted to let you all know is when your dough is finished kneading, let it sit for 15 minutes. In that way, whatever water is in this dough is going to be absorbed by the flour. So when you go to fry this, it doesn't splatter on you. I tried this recipe before and that happened to me, so that's why I'm telling you all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into four pieces. And that way, I'll just fry one piece at a time so it will be easier because if you were to cut up all of this, the flour will get soft on you when you're trying to pick up the pieces to fry them. So just lightly flour your surface and you're going to roll out each piece one at a time. So when you're finished frying one piece, then you'll move on to the second, third and fourth. I prefer to fry them in small batches rather than in big batches because this is a lot. This makes one pound of pira. And now using my pizza cutter, I'm going to cut this into thin strips. Sorry that my camera was not properly on the door. So as I said, we're going to cut this into strips. And if you don't have a pizza cutter, you can use your knife. I'm sure most homes have a pizza cutter because most of us make our own homemade pizza these days. And it doesn't have to be perfect strips. So now when you're finished doing that, you go the opposite direction. So I just put in a piece to test the oil to make sure that it's hot. And I'm, it is hot, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my pieces of flour to fry. And you want to fry these on medium heat. And let them fry until they're nice, light light brown you don't want them to get too brown because pira is usually a nice whitish color so you just want to fry them just enough until they're cooked inside just give it a turn and 
so my first set is finished. I'm going to drain it onto a paper towel. And I'm going to finish the rest of my dough balls that I made, which is rolling, cutting, and frying until I've fried out all of them. And I'll see you back in a little bit. Using your hand mill or your food processor, you're going to grind your pieces of fried flour into a very fine powder. Once you get it going, it's a lot easier, but when you now start off with your first set to grind, it's usually a little difficult. Okay, so to your ground flour, you're going to add your powdered milk, some ghee, and your elaichi. And give this a mix my sugar syrup is thick if you be careful take your finger and you touch the syrup you'll see that it's very very thick and sticky and that's the consistency you want it to be now I'm gonna add my condensed milk to this and my ginger and I'm gonna give it a mix and I'm gonna set it aside Now you just want to mix this for a couple of seconds and then set it aside and then we'll go ahead and put it into the flour that we ground up for the pira. So to this you want to slowly add your milk mixture a little at a time because you don't want this to get too soft and mix it in. Now, you'll know when you have enough of the pag water in here, when most of that dried flour has absorbed the milk mixture, and when you put it together in your hands, it will stay. And you see this is still falling apart, so that means it still needs more mixing and it may need some more pag. So just keep adding the pag until your mixture can come together. Okay, so I think this looks good for me. You see when you press down on it even, it holds its shape or it stays together actually. And that is what you want. So I just have a very, very little bit of milk mixture in here and as I said I always like to have a little extra than I have less you run out of your pack mixture it's very difficult to have to wait to make over more so now all you, now all you do is pour this out onto a baking tray and I'm just gonna lightly grease my baking tray with a little bit of ghee just so that it doesn't stick and it's very easy to come out Now this may not fill my whole tray, so I'm just going to fill it halfway. So all you do is press down. And you want to try and smoothen this out and get it as smooth and as even as possible. Now if you wanted this to be smoother, you can take your rolling pin and you can just roll it just to get the top of it extremely smooth. Okay, so I've finished smoothening it out and what I like to do is I like to go ahead and just score it. Now you want to go the other side and make the squares as big or as small as you would like. So you go ahead and you cut them into small blocks and as you notice I do not use any knives on my bakeware because if you use knives you're going to damage your bakeware and why spend so much money to buy nice nice bakeware or nice um 
utensils or anything that you buy for your kitchen why spend so much of money and then you'll take a sharp knife and go ahead and damage it no you always want to take care of your things. when you take care of your things the longer it will last and I believe in taking care of my things so that's it I'm gonna leave this to set on my counter and then I once it sets I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like so here you have it my flour pear recipe let me just show you all it's really firm you can tell it's not falling apart and it tastes really delicious it's not too sweet if you all want it much sweeter than how I made it then I would suggest you use an entire tin of condensed milk with two cups of sugar but if you're diabetic, you'll want to cut back on the sugar. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. Make it and let me know down below if you like it. It is very time consuming and it's, very, it's a very long process to make this, but it's worth it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all another day with another one of my recipes. Enjoy!